Credit Card Ladder is made up of five key tiers, each containing different types of credit cards based on your experience in the credit world. Whether you're someone getting your first credit card or someone that already has multiple credit cards to their name, there's always room to climb this credit card ladder to reach the coveted tier five. Today, I am sharing with you how you can climb this credit card ladder and everything you need to know about each and every tier. At the end of the video, comment down below which credit card tier you're currently at. Tier one is the starter tier. The cards in this tier are typically made up of cards that don't require a super high credit score or any credit history to get. Typically the credit line on these cards is just a couple hundred dollars and there's not many perks or tie-ins associated with the cards. By far the biggest reason to get one of these cards is to start building credit whether you're someone that does not have the credit history or someone that has a poor credit history. As mentioned before, there is no minimum credit score that you need to get one of these cards. So if you're someone that's unsure where to start with your credit card journey, I definitely recommend starting in tier one. Some cards included on this tier are the Capital One Platinum card and dozens of student cards out there if you are a college student with no credit history. Depending on your goals, you can expect maybe to spend a year to two years on this tier. However, that is not necessarily required as you can jump right into level two if you are comfortable enough. But by far the biggest thing that you should focus on while at tier one with the starter cards is to make sure you are making all your payments on time in full and really developing good financial habits the sooner you can focus down on those habits the sooner you should be able to move on and start getting rewards for spending moving on to tier number two we are now at the beginner tier the cards that make up tier number two are typically no annual fee cards that will offer some sort of incentive such as cash back or sign up bonuses when you spend with them. As mentioned before, it is certainly possible to skip right over tier one and get into tier two. That's what I did myself but if you aren't comfortable using a credit card, I definitely recommend tier one. Oftentimes the credit score to get one of these cards is around a 680. However, that does not mean you cannot get one if you have a little bit lower of a credit score. Some examples of cards on this tier are the City Custom Cash, Amex Blue Cash Every Day, as well as the Chase Freedom cards. Cards on this tier will elicit some sort of signup bonus. Oftentimes it will be a $200 cash back reward if you spend 500 or more dollars within a set amount of time. In this tier, you'll also start to see some rewards for spending with cash back, such as 3% back on dining, 3% back on groceries, 1.5% everywhere else. It really just depends on the card, but now we're starting to see some of the actual benefits of using a credit card. Oftentimes, people stay on tier two of the credit card ladder for maybe a year or two because these are great cards with no annual fees and they're awesome just to get started and really seeing how much you can earn. And these cards can create some great lineups that don't get overly complicated. Let's take a look at one card that I mentioned before. Let's say the Chase Freedom Unlimited. This $0 annual fee card will allow you to earn 1.5% cash back everywhere you spend with some other elevated purchases. That means that wherever I go, I can earn cash back guaranteed, which over the course of a year or two can equate to hundreds of dollars. That's why I really love this tier is it really shows you how much you can earn by using a credit card. And oftentimes after staying on tier two for a while, people will start to dabble up into tier three. That brings us to tier three, which is the intermediate tier. This is where things start to get interesting with higher rewards and higher spending categories, as well as greater signup bonuses. Tier three is where we will start to see the more travel focused credit cards, albeit not the premium ones, we can still see elevated perks for airlines, travel, hotels, whatever it may be. Oftentimes to get a tier three credit card, you'll need credit history of around a year or more and having a score of around a 700. Within tier three, we will have a varying annual fee range Oftentimes we can have cards such as the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which will cost you $95 and offer great incentives with travel. But then we can have the Amex Gold on the other end, which will cost you $250, but give you a ton of cash back with dining and groceries. Now these cards do come with annual fees, however, they are much lower than the premium credit cards that we'll discuss later. What really defines this tier is having credit cards that will give us more elevated spending categories and signup bonuses. For example, the Amex Gold will offer us four times points on our dining and groceries, and there is no $0 annual fee card that will give us as high as those spending categories. My point here is that yes, there is an annual fee with these cards, However, if you use these cards properly, such as the $120 Uber cash credit with Amex Gold, as well as the other ones built inside the card, you can essentially wipe away that annual fee and still take advantage of those higher cash back spending categories. Time that you're gonna spend in tier three is going to vary. You could often spend one to two years here before moving on to tier four, or you could spend your entire life in this category. It's a great place that you can really maximize your rewards without having the much higher annual fees that we'll see soon. This brings us to tier four, which is the pre tier. In this tier, we can enjoy dozens of credit cards that will begin to offer us so much more than the previous cards we've seen. 
Oftentimes, they will have much higher annual fees and be more focused around travel. With these cards, we can start to see specific things such as airport lounge access, higher levels of insurance coverage, as well as some things such as premium status at certain hotels. Typically, to get one of these credit cards, you will need a credit score of around 720 or above. Just to name a few, there's the Amex Platinum card, Capital One Venture X, and Chase Sapphire Reserve. If we focus in on the annual fee for each of these cards, the Capital One will have an annual fee of $395, the Amex will have an annual fee of $695, and the Chase Sapphire Reserve will have an annual fee of $550. That does seem like a lot, however, these cards are loaded with so many perks and statement credits that it is well worth the fee. For example, the Amex Platinum with that $695 annual fee is very high, However, there's over $1,500 worth of value you can get each and every year when holding this card. Essentially, if you're someone that's going to travel and you know that you're gonna take advantage of the airport lounge access and the statement credits, these cards are a no-brainer to carry. When it comes to the actual spending categories with these credit cards, they are not that great as many of them will be very travel focused. I'm gonna point back to the Amex Platinum again, which will earn you five times points on your travel with Amex. However, you'll only earn one times points at your other purchases. This means if you are someone that does not travel a lot, there is no real reason to get one of these credit cards. If you wanna maximize your spending, you might be better off with one of the lower tier credit cards in tier two or tier three as they will give you more incentives on your day-to-day -day spending. I do have individual reviews on each of the three travel cards I mentioned here, so be sure to check those out if you are interested in getting a tier four credit card. You can expect to spend either one year to your entire life at this tier. The reason for this is that tier five requires invitation to get some of those credit cards. As a whole, tier four is a great place that most people will settle at with their credit cards. When you start to travel more, having one of these can really help maximize all the value when it comes to your travel. Let's jump over to tier number five, which is the elite tier. As mentioned before, these cards are going to require an invitation to apply. The JP Morgan Reserve card is one that comes to mind, which requires $10 million worth of assets to even receive an invitation to apply. So you can see the Amex Black card, which will require a $10,000 initiation fee, as well as $5,000 annual fees, assuming that you did get invited. These cards might not offer as much as you would think when it comes to the actual statement credits and value packed inside of these cards. I have a video breaking down the most luxurious and invite only credit cards out there. So be sure to check that out. I'll link it up above and down below. Given that the majority of people watching this video will probably never touch this tier, including myself, there's not much I want to go into value outside of these cards are awesome to carry as it's a huge flux on everyone around you. That will wrap up our credit card list for today. As we saw, tier one brings us our cards for those that don't have a credit history or are just getting started with their card journey. Tier two brought us up to the cards with no annual fees, just giving us some great incentives to start using cards. Tiers three and four dabbled us into annual fee cards, topping us off with the premium cards that are made for the majority of people out there. And tier five was those invite only credit cards that really are exclusive. Once again, let me know down below which tier you currently find yourself in and which tier you'd eventually like to be. My biggest piece of advice would be make your credit card journey fun. There's so much that you can do with credit cards, so many rewards you can take advantage of, and you can pay for trips, get so much cash back, just enjoy the process. As always, if you guys could also go like and subscribe, it goes a long way in helping the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.